We've been doing these as a service to our industry because we know that now more, now more than ever, things are so crazy and who better to invest in one another than each other, right? And so today we've invited three of our special program directors to join us. Um, I know you guys can say hi to them where you are, but we would love to welcome Denise Harper from The Bridge, Scott Harold from SOS Radio, and Troy West from ASBK. Hi, everybody. Hey there. Hello. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for spending time with us because we know your time is valuable. We know that you guys have so many things going on, but we wanted to get people that are doing great things in their, in their markets, but also from a different city, different markets represented so that the things that you're doing will really hit spot on with a lot of the people that are watching us. So as we go through our time today, we're going to ask questions, talk through programming strategies, what it looks like, how we're operating right now. You may have questions, and so there's a chat feature or Q&A. Feel free to use either one there. We'll make sure that we come at the end and have questions. We're also on Facebook Live, so welcome to all of our Facebook Live viewers. Um, please feel free to ask questions there. We'll make sure that we get to them at the end because um, we know that these three are going to be um, really taking the time to invest in us today. So anyway, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and dive in, right? Um, programming looks different. You guys have been programming for a long time. And so um, today it looks different than it did two months ago, right? And so Scott, we're going to start with you. What, what has changed when it comes to SOS, when it comes to clocks and imaging and on air look like for you, Scott, with SOS right now? You know, I think it makes you look at your whole programming strategy and look back to like what really matters when everything's kind of just stripped down to what's the the first thing what are your listeners coming to your radio station for and that's what we've been talking a lot about is just like okay let's ask our listeners what they're coming for what they expect from us and we were part of the jacobs media survey that you led like a couple of weeks ago we got a lot of great insight on that and our listeners were saying it's straight up like hope and encouragement like it was like 73 percent said the main reason they come to us was for hope 21% said that was the secondary reason. So I add that together, that's almost 95% of your listeners are saying that's why they came. And then 93% said they come to be encouraged. 89.7 of them said that they want to hear scripture. And so it's like, well, okay, let's start there. Let's find some ways to deliver on that in relevant ways with the frame of where our listeners are. But I think it just makes me think about this season is refocusing on all of us is maybe this disruptor actually is a recenter for all of radio. And when, you know, iHeart and Cumulus and Entercom and Beasley are laying off so many people right now, our ministries are still here and our ministries are still alive and our ministries are still able to share some things that commercial radio isn't able to share. And so that's what we've been just really focused on. What are our essentials? And it's how do we deliver the hope and encouragement and a Christ-centered worldview to our listeners in the space that they're in. Well, and Scott, with you being in Vegas, that's needed more than ever right now, right? I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. crazy. I think, I think all of our cities need it. Yeah. Uh, Denise is up in the Northeast um, covering Delaware and that whole um, Northeast Center. And so what, what does it look like now for you guys um, with how you're programming to your audience there? You know, over the weekend, uh, Delaware and Maryland, which is our two primary locations, our um, coverage area, were, were all on the news as the hot spots for the virus. And it was just, you know, you can feel it's palpable that people are very um, nervous. Uh, half of our audience is sheltering at home and um, part of our audience is supposed to stay at home, only essential people out on the streets. And so um, listening thing, patterns have changed about hope has changed. You know, hope was not canceled when everything else is, is is being poof and um, so people come to us for hope and encouragement and they're and they want to know too that in everything that's been disrupted in their lives there's some things that still feel very normal and natural and so we didn't want to disrupt too much of what the ministry of the bridge is which is to bring hope and encouragement so it i agree with scott it, it has made us relook at 
you know, the peripheral things and really focus on what's really important. What do people really want to know? What do they need to hear? They need to know that we are going to get through this. We are going to survive. We're going to come out on the other side and we're going to be strong. And when we are able to connect again, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Well, and I want to I want to focus on that here in a few minutes on what you do do once uh, you reconnect. Um, and so, but Troy, you're in Houston. Um, you've had tragedy before there. You've lived through it with Hurricane Harvey. Um, but as far as your programming strategies, what what has changed for you? Well, I think um, you know when when all this broke, uh, they they shut down the world's biggest rodeo here in Houston. I think that's when our staff was like, "Uh oh, this is this is serious. This is this is uh, going to change our lives a little bit." And uh, we immediately um, started pulling some of the imaging that didn't make sense, and we rewrote a bunch of new imaging. A lot of the, you know, uh, fear over faith type imaging hit the air. And then um, just recently, when we got the Jacobs Media um, study back, we learned that our audience really wasn't fearful. They were um, more fearful that their neighbors or their family members got sick, but for themselves, uh, they weren't full of fear. So we pulled uh, that imaging and we're rewriting a bunch of new imaging based on what Jacobs Media tested, you know, in the, in the study. Uh, um, some of the things that is really working is um, we have medical professionals um, on the air praying for other medical professionals. We have police officers on the air praying for other police officers. We have prison guards. We have a big prison here in our part of Texas and uh, praying for the prisoners and other prison guards um, and just telling stories. I mean, this is all uh, story driven. Uh, we get calls every single day of heroes and we get those stories out and then we honor those frontline um, workers um, that's another thing that Jacobs Media showed us is um, something that our listeners wanted to hear more of was supporting the frontline workers, the medical workers. So, so we're involved in a lot of the, uh, I think everybody's seen the hospital parking lot prayer and praise events. Um, they're usually um, organized by churches and then they call us and say, hey, can you do a prayer and play a praise song? And we will do that all day long. Those those things are gold for us uh, to be partnered with churches and to do those events. So that's that's how our uh, programming has changed. A lot of prayer on the air. We're the God listens station, so we we do uh, believe that hearing that prayer on the air comforts people, and, and also highlighting those frontline workers that are essential right now. Do you um you're changing your imaging? You're targeting more based on the survey results. Have you changed your clocks or anything of that caliber? Not really. Um, we, uh, you know, the, the one thing that we may have a discussion about is uh, one thing we noticed in our Nielsen ratings is morning drive isn't as strong as you know normal uh, because people are just in different patterns and uh, they're they're maybe getting up later or they're just turning on the radio later. So you know maybe it's a discussion of do we move our start them an hour later and move them into to midday more because they do incredible content that we recycle throughout the day, but we might benefit from having them on an hour later. But that's something that we'll have to discuss, you know, here in the programming team. But that's one thing that, that uh, has been on my mind as far as changing clocks is to extend the morning show by an hour. Mm. Scott, is that something that you guys have talked about? I know you're on the morning show. So um, how is that looking mm -hmm. for you right now? Well, ratings come out this week, so we'll, we'll we'll know a little more what Troy gets. You obviously get the weeklies. We do it monthly, and so we'll be digging into that, you know, in the next couple of days. But yeah, I think we all realize radio is industry has been so concerned about the connected car over the last couple of years and figuring out how we look at that and the reality. And that's what we were you know, a couple of months ago thinking about it right now, we're thinking, okay, wow, we just lost a lot of the car listening because our listeners mm -hmm. not, you know, dropping her kids off in the pickup line and driving the kids to soccer and dance after school. And she's not sitting in rush hour traffic in the morning, mm -hmm. which, yeah, I do the morning show. I noticed the calls are different. You know, the calls that are coming in are a lot more serious, you know, and people that are saying, hey, thank you guys so much for being there. So we've kind of dug in and started explaining like when we're live, we're letting people know we really are live. And most of our air talent during the day is live and so when we're here we're 
doing a little more of the education and letting people know that like, I'm actually here. You know, when you see a lot of other stations are broadcasting from home and you watch TV on the news and you can see that they're sitting in their living room and they're playing with their dogs and their kids are walking into the camera shot, which is fun. And, <laughs> and, and if we get to a place where we need to do that, I'm certainly going to make that a part of my show and make, make it fun and put some benchmarks and bits and things and, and center my show a little more around that. But I think, yeah, realizing the listeners aren't using their car as much, they're at home. And I was concerned, do our listeners all have working home radios or as many home radios as we did when I was growing up and I used a clock radio and I that big boom box sitting up with the high speed dubbing back when I was a kid taping my favorite songs from the radio and I know that my kids don't do it like that you know I saw some stats that a lot of the streaming music services are down right now and I've seen a lot of stats that video is up so we're looking at like, okay, how do we take some of our content that is audio and repurpose that on video? Maybe we, we're experimenting a little bit with posting our audio content on YouTube and on Facebook, like video things and Instagram videos and things in a video space, but it's the audio with graphics or, you know, movement behind it, but get into those video spaces where maybe we can reach some other people where people seem to be aggregating on there. But the other part that is looking at two different strategies of we're on the air telling people hey go to our digital spaces that's the most radio and it almost sounds like oh hey stop listening to your radio and then go use our alexa skill or stop listening to the radio and go to our facebook page or our instagram and there's a time and place for all of that it works together but the other side of it is there's a lot of people that are in those video spaces that we can go out there and grab them and say hey come back and actually interact with our brand because we do audio and we do it really well or going into our, our social spaces uh, and, and grabbing those listeners and letting them know that, Hey, it's encouragement like we were talking about, or you want to have some conversations with first responders. You want to know what it's like for someone that survived coronavirus. We actually just talked to someone this morning about that. And here's the audio, but then also putting it in a video space where they can grab it in there, but going into the social space and literally letting those people know that may not be listening to the radio right now. Hey, we're here or we have resources where you can listen to what we do through a smart speaker or through Siri or through, you know, podcast things. We found in some of our research over the last couple of years that our listeners will use, we'll use the term podcast and half of our listeners go, I don't podcast. And the Jacobs media research we saw was saying, Oh, about 20% of your people, 15% of your people may podcast, but do they listen to on-demand audio? Are they streaming your radio station through your website? And, and ours are saying they were definitely using our online stream. And so we've got audio on demand and we can use that language. We use the podcast language to us. They're the same listener. They are not. So we're educating our listener on how to use those things and how to let them know if you don't have a radio near you when you're working or if you're on your computer and your kids are hogging your laptop top for zoom for school and you want to stream us and you're you're in a room where you don't have a radio or you're getting ready making breakfast you can you can use this alexa skill and all you have to say is hey alexa enable the sos radio skill and what she'll let you do is listen to the podcast from our morning show stream the music and then if you don't like the podcast discussion you say hey, alexa skip she'll jump to the next one and the next one and we're talking about it conversationally to sort of educate our listeners but we're we're, we're getting real intentional well and on that you you know, um, I read a quote from Tracy Johnson, um, who's a consultant in programming space. He said, your streams, your apps, and your smart speaker listening is going up. If you're not doing total, re uh, total line reporting, you're leaving some shares on the table. And I thought that was really an interesting thing that, that he said um, when it comes to that. So, yeah. um, D Denise, how about you're on the morning show too there. Are you seeing your listeners engage with you differently? Yes, um, and partly it's because we had to. Um, our morning show team was the last of the uh, staff to leave the building. And so um, we are doing our show from separate homes, which is, which is the unique thing. And all these years that Bill and I have been doing the show together, um, we're so used to hand signaling each other and all of a sudden now we can't see each other. <laughs> but um, noticed that right away, um, you know, without having the calls in, that has changed the kind of the dynamic a little bit of the show. Um, we do have the ability though for texting. And so um, it's been a wonderful thing to have uh, listeners be able to, you know, keep responding and, and texting what they want to hear, um, their comments. Um, we've noticed that 
that definitely people are listening differently and not as early in the morning. And I'd be totally fine with uh, starting the morning show. I um, just want to go on record yeah. that, saying that. <laughs> well, as you guys are thinking about um, your listeners, and I'm sure you're thinking about the people that are sampling your station for the very time because maybe they realize you are hope that they're not hearing and because um even like survey or the actual coronavirus survey that you guys referenced um it said that the number one thing that your listeners are missing is going to church and so right now you may be the only church that your listeners have and so um, even those that may not have even listened to christian radio before so troy what are you guys doing at ksbj to embrace um, new listeners or people that are sampling you for the first time? That, that's something that we really didn't have to change much of. Um, Houston has 10,000 people a month moving into the city, and it's been that way for a while. So we launched uh, a couple of years ago, Welcome to Houston campaign. So at the top of every hour, we have a Welcome to Houston, wel Welcome to KSBJ segment, whether it's one of our artists or uh, uh, influencer in town, welcoming people to our city and welcoming people to the radio station. Uh, we also have a segment that runs during morning drive and afternoon drive called Welcome Houston, Welcome to KSBJ, where there is, uh, we use our traffic, uh, our traffic announcer is one of our biggest personalities on the radio station. And Bill does a segment where he highlights something that's going on in Houston and then welcomes people to the radio station. So we really haven't had to change uh, that aspect of our programming. It's been kind of baked in the last couple of years. That's nice. How about for you guys, Scott, there in, in Vegas? You know, I think, you know, we, we did something for Easter. Normally, you know, we're tracked, you know, on Sunday mornings. And for Easter, we were thinking about everyone who was at home just – you know, waiting to watch online church and missing their family and making breakfast and sitting in your pajamas. And we we're kind of brainstorming, like, do we do like a sunrise service and do it on the radio or do a fun radio version of that and get some artists praying and play some live worship music and have some local pastors or some, we were kind of kicking around an idea. It started with that. And then it kind of grew into, why don't we just maybe not even do it like a local worship show, but why don't we just do it's like our SOS family sitting around having Easter and, we can record that. We can pre-record that. And so Robert Forbes and Chalmer and uh, Therese Main tracks for us and, and Cece uh, as well. And so we, we, we kind of just put like our, our main air team together and just did some things talking about Easter and the resurrection on Easter morning. It's just a special thing. And, you know, now we're kind of talking about like, wow, should we keep doing something like that <laughs> through this season each week? It sounded really good. It really felt in the moment. And, you know, and we're looking at things like that. It's like, well, we're not trying to be a church. We're not trying to compete with the church as our station. But there was there was something special about that that we've been kind of kicking around. But the other the other thing about it is I think it just shows us that, you know, make sure that we're welcoming throughout the week. I think that's one thing that we've just talked about in some of our team meetings. We're, we're having our air team meet once a week just on Zoom just to we just connect kind of face to face, shoulder to shoulder, kind of looking at where, where our listener is. Cause each week it kind of shifts a little bit. And a couple of weeks ago, you could say COVID-19 50 times. And now to some people, it may be a trigger word, but it doesn't mean you should stop saying it, but you should probably be sensitive to how much you say it. We can still share all the values and still talk to the first responders and celebrate all the things that God's doing in our city in the way that people are helping without mentioning those buzzwords every five seconds because everybody knows they're in that space but each week we're kind of gauging that and talking through it but I think as we're as we were we were kicking around this last week like you know everyone's sitting at home watching church services and I probably watched more online church services than this weekend than I ever have because we were streaming one and then I had some some worship music playing in the background while we were making breakfast and I see Stephen Furtick doing something I'm like oh I wonder what he's doing for Easter and I play part of that and then I see another church pastor here in town that posted something so I watched their service and what I was thinking about is I don't know the people at their church I might know the main pastor, but I don't know their worship leaders. I don't know the songs that they sing every Sunday that are kind of in their rotation of their church. And it made me think about our radio station that way. 
okay, if someone's plugging in this week that doesn't normally listen to Christian radio, but they're feeling like, I just need something. I just need to feel closer to God. There's something spiritual I need during this time that I wasn't thinking about. And compound that with, with Easter week. And uh, I just feel disjointed. And they maybe tune to our radio station for the first time in a long time. And they don't know who I am. They don't know who my afternoon show is. They don't know our music. They don't know who Chris Tomlin is or Mercy Me is. But they go, hey, that's a pretty good song. Or, oh, wait, I heard that song in a movie. What, that, I, that I can only imagine movie. And they didn't realize that that was his story, right? But then they make the connection. And I think there's a lot of people that are that are plugging in that don't know all the lingo, that don't know our artists, don't know our team yet. And if we could be welcoming and intentional on that, and then obviously watch our Christianese when we get into resurrection and atonement for sin and the Messiah, all <laughs> of these things that we take for granted that, that are normal in our lingo. But someone who's plugging in, it was like, okay, well, what does that mean? Like Jesus died on the cross for my sin and he took my place. Or, you know, you're abiding in the vine and when you're connected, you bear much fruit. And it's like, okay, well, Jesus was basically saying like, he uses analogy of God is, is the gardener and there's this vine and we're the branches off that. But when we're connected and we're grafted in with him, we start to bear fruit naturally because we're connected with him. And you start to explain those values and those lessons and just normal words you're a lot more welcoming and you don't have that wall up where like, these guys are way over my head. And that was just too, too heady for me. So that's what we're talking about doing yeah. more tangible angles with. How does that look for you, for you, Denise, up there in Delaware and covering in Maryland and, and embracing your new listeners? So we uh, intentionally look toward the weekend of helping people find a local church because we do get a lot of, a traffic over the weekends. Our population in Delaware, Maryland, uh, New Jersey, South Jersey, just really quadruples, especially once we get into the summer months. So I don't know what that's going to look like this summer, but um, we do intentionally try to help people find a church they can connect with, whether they're new or whether they've been here and they're just interested in learning more about Christ. Um, and one of the things that we did this past uh, weekend, we kind of, we started figuring out what, what could we do? Easter is like the most important holiday of the year for Christian radio. We should definitely do something. And um, so instead of just focusing on the different churches that are, um, uh, and a lot are doing drive-in services. So we've tried to create a directory on our website so that if people are looking to stay within the confines of their car, but still be able to wave to people and enjoy a service and get out on Sundays that they could do that. But we decided to put together an, an Easter special and a sunrise because uh, we're right here by the beaches. Man, the locals, this is the time where the locals all want to get out to the beach because we don't have all the tourists here yet. And uh, so we encourage people, to, even if you go sit in your car and look east. <laughs> and um, we took all of the on-air staff and told the Easter story. Um, we pre-recorded it and we put together some really special things with that and some special music so that um, we're, we weren't taking away from the local churches who are doing something special for Easter, but we, um, we wanted to re be able to really connect um, our listeners and um, their families across Delmarva to enjoy and to really kind of focus in on what's so special. And honestly, we have had more feedback about how that was something so unique and so special that they'd never done before and just really appreciated the, the time that they really set aside to, um, to really think about the impact of what Christ did for us. So that was a really cool thing that the bridge was able to do. Well, Denise, earlier you were, you said something about looking forward. And so, um, I checked out a, a, a webinar that Tracy Johnson did for Secular Radio. And one of the things that he said that I thought was so incredible was he said, plan for the parade. Because when it's over, radio stations need to be ready. And so are you able to think about the next week? Because it feels like, as somebody mentioned earlier, every day is different. And so um, are you in your position as a program director, are you able to think over the next few weeks and what what are your are your plans for your station um, because next week's planning 
with your programming strategy may look different than this week. It's constantly changing, even though it may feel like it's staying the same day in, day out. Um, we want to be able to embrace and, and hold on to new listeners who are finding us because they're looking for something different. They're tired of watching the news. Um, they, they want to find something that they, sometimes it's background, but they can kind of listen in and be drawn in for the silver lining moments that we like to share, um, things that God is doing that we may, he's been doing them all along, we just didn't notice them. So now we want to be proactive in saying, let's not forget those things that we're learning along this journey. And how can we um, encapsulate those on radio for our listeners so that as we come out of this, we don't forget what God is teaching us about ourselves and about him. Troy, I know you, you have mentioned this as well, like looking to see what other markets are doing. So mm. what are you in your role there as program director? What are you doing to prepare for the next few weeks? Well, Houston kind of got a late start. And as you look at the different graphs and things that they have, and you see where your city's peak is, ours is not until uh, the first part of May. And yet there are many cities that are peaking now or have already passed peak. And so what I've done is um, I've called Ty McFarland at KCMS in Seattle. Seattle was one of the first areas that uh, had the first coronavirus cases, the first area that had deaths. And I was able to, you know, when I talked to him before, we really hadn't seen a number of deaths uh, because of the virus. And I was asking him, you know, you know, we'd gone through the whole uh, imaging and, and content of social distance and wash your hands and 20 seconds and Here's a song to sing, you know, but I, that, that, set, that another phase was coming, a phase where a lot of our listeners would know somebody who had COVID and then a point where a lot of our listeners would know somebody who died from COVID. And I just wanted to get some insight from Ty because his audience has already gone through that. So um, depending on where you're at with your radio station, you might look, look at other communities that are ahead of you on the curve and, and call those program directors and said, what, what was it that your listeners needed from you at this point? Um, right now, now in Houston, I, I, I feel like we're at a, um, a stage of, of um, grief. Uh, my son is a senior in high school. He's not gonna know the feeling of walking across a stage and, and grabbing a diploma, something that he's worked hard for. He's not gonna have that opportunity. That's a memory I've had, you know, all my life is, is that moment. He won't have that, it'll be different for him. Um, also his senior prom has been taken away from him. And you know, it's not something he talks about a lot, but I can tell that it, it bothers him. And our listeners are that way. They're going through the same sort of thing. There's, there's a lot of events and situations and weddings and funerals that are being missed. So I guess it's just a matter of taking a look at your community and then figuring out how your radio station can fit in there. Can you uh, in some way honor seniors in high school? Uh, can you offer, I don't know, I've seen radio stations are doing virtual proms. I don't know how that works, but uh, it's a great way to get um, real creative with, with your, your radio station. But um, yeah, what I would suggest is look at those communities that are ahead of you on the curve, call those radio stations and ask, what, what are your listeners going through right now so I can prepare? or what my listeners are going to face in a couple of weeks. Do you have more to add to that? You know, one thing that I was thinking about when you were talking about that, Troy, was kind of where that peak is and where the same way it did in like Washington or in Michigan or on the East Coast right now. But what, what, what we learned when we went through the October 1 attack in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay and, and even through 9-11 years ago at other stations that I've worked with is – you get to a place where if it gets bad, your city may go through the stages of grief. So literally open up those, those stages of grief and you look at those things, the bargaining, the anger, the just the solace where you just feel like, I don't feel anything. I just feel dead inside. And why is that? And now I feel frustrated and angst. And then now I finally feel the sadness. Sometimes that takes months, weeks um, for your community to get to that place. And just because this is, over and they say, hey, you can go back to work, you can go to concerts again, you can go to restaurants, you can go to church. Doesn't mean our listeners are going to do that right away. Doesn't mean that they're just going to say, oh, I can go to church next week, let's go. 
I mean, there could be another wave of this before they have the vaccines out. You know, we don't know where all this is going to go. And hopefully it's not as bad as, you know, they projected all this. And that's what we're all praying for, right? <laughs> but if your city goes through something that does get rough, go back to those stages of grief if you don't really know how to respond to that and look and say, where, where are we right now? And then ask your listeners how they're feeling about some of that. Because it goes up and it goes down and it goes up again and it goes down. But what you do is you see it like the stock market where it goes up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, but it starts here, then it ends up here eventually. And so they don't see it like that. They just feel the ups and the downs and the topsy turviness. But again, going back to pointing them back to that hope and encouragement is one. But then Denise, when you were talking about sharing the, the stories of what God is already doing that we're not seeing, a lot of our stations have pushed off of our, our, our pledge drives. You know, ours was scheduled originally for April 1st and 2nd. We punted on that and we're actually we've got to raise money for a new transmitter this year. And so we're deciding all and just, just, just trust on our, you know, on the, the reserves that we have. But through this season, you're getting a lot of really good stories and people are calling your radio station and thanking you. They're calling you and say, hey, I appreciate what you guys are doing. And a lot of times we just take those and, and our air talent just go, oh, thanks, man. And they'll play them because it makes us feel good, like we're getting our pat on the back. People appreciate what we're doing. But bank those in a folder for your next pledge drive. Because then when you want to talk about what God did, you'll have audio from your listeners telling the story for you. Really good. That's really good. You know, one of the things that we did about a week and a half ago, um, the morning show team recorded a 60-second uh, a spot that, just an imaging piece that talks about grief uh, because I think that's one of the hardest things is that you can't be with the ones that you want to be with mm -hmm. in this time. And that I just can't even wrap my brain around. Um, you know, it's, it's horrible to go through the grieving process, but to go through the grieving process alone is, um, something that, you know, we just really wanted to tackle. And Scott, what you're saying about the, the whole, the phases of grief and walking through that. And, and we wanted to specifically identify that and say, you know, we, we know um, that it's hard. This is a tough time. And we want you to know that we're here with you. We want to honor your person that you love and, um, and that we're grieving with you and we're praying for you. So. And on, you know, when Scott had to face the difficulty of the shooting, um, he brought on Dwight Bain to really kind of share with his listeners and invest in them from a counselor's perspective. And I thought that was a brilliant idea to help try to meet the needs. Randy Davison has a question and it's, do you have any concrete ideas or plans as the stay at home orders are lifted? Like what is your Mother's Day plan or your graduation plan? Or have you guys even had an opportunity to think that far in advance? I'm not sure we'll be out of our homes yet by then. <laughs> Um, we're looking at probably mid-May or so, at least around here. Okay. So, we're, it, so our celebrations of moms are going to look different this year as well. Right, right. I think we, we keep doing the normal things that we do. We just do it in the space of where our listener is. So, I mean, yeah, we have patients, but really what this is doing is just making us laser focus on, on what we can do with that. And I think when you're going through that, we don't want to forget that people are still looking for the humor and the fun, but there's a difference between being funny and being fun. Yeah. And, and a lot of air personalities are extrovert, big nature, fun, loving people. But let's be honest, a lot of us aren't really that funny. We're not comedic. We're in the Mother's Day ideas. Well, the graduation-ish kind of ideas like Troy was talking about. Do you do something virtual? Do we kick something around for summer break? And we talk about vacation season again. Maybe it's about what we're looking forward to versus what we're dealing with right now. But embracing the fun and playing with your listeners and inviting your listeners to be a part of the fun and celebrate with you or bring moms on or have conversations about moms and those typical things that we do that are a lot of times just the silly like call-in breaks. Maybe we dig into our storytelling capability a little bit more and we talk about the moms and because we don't have the calls that are coming in 
a morning drive like we normally do, but we get some good stories or we record audio or we get some friends to call us and we record their stories. Sarah Taylor uh, at KCMS called me the other week and said, hey, um, could you shared something online in a blog? Could, could you come? on my show and just talk about that like as a listener because she's working from home and she doesn't have the calls that are coming in but she's like I don't she doesn't need to reference me and my radio station I'm just a friend that's calling into her show sharing a story or sharing a spiritual thought and you know we can do the same thing as we're talking about mom as we're talking about graduation who are communicators we dig in not just hey this is a fun good news story do it in 20 seconds let me develop the setting here let me develop the character who this person is or this student that decided they wanted to make you know 3,000 masks to they wanted to do more than the national cathedral because they saw that that was one of the benchmarks and the student had this idea it was a story in our show prep this week you know who is this student what is he passionate about what does he care about you know um, talk about the person, talk about the setting, talk about the situation rather than just, hey, quick, good news story in 20 seconds. Right. Let's be storytellers because we can be fun without being funny by doing that. Right. Let's, um, let's just shift gears a little bit because not only are you taking care of your station and what comes out of the speakers, but you as um, program directors, you have a staff that you're responsible for. And so I know Troy, a lot of your people, Denise, you're working from home. Scott, your, your air folks are coming in and they're um, operating out of the SOS studios. But Troy, when it comes to encouraging your staff, because they are on the front lines, they are the ones that are offering hope to your listeners. How do you encourage them right now? Well, um, yeah, so early, very early on, um, we, we still come into the, we're live around the clock and we still, all, everybody comes into work. We, we, um, we have two buildings at KSBJ, administrative, building we have a programming building and very early on we quarantined the programming building nobody was allowed in our building that wasn't on the programming staff um uh so so we wanted to let our our djs know that they were protected now we since split up our team shows one is at home one's in the studio but everybody else is coming in i become a protective mother hen of my staff and uh, I send them constant emails. And one of the things that I encourage them with is um, a lot of the ministry was shut down for their benefit to protect them, to keep the virus from them. And that they needed to be accountable not only to the rest of KSBJ and the rest of all the different pillars of our ministry, but also to each other. And so I, I just really encourage them to, hey, get your groceries delivered. Don't go out, stay home. Um, they have delivery service to cost a little bit more, but it's worth it. I will go to the store for you so you don't have to. Um, but that's the main thing is uh, encourage them to, uh, I mean, they're all great storytellers to continue telling those stories. But I think to let them know that, hey, we are doing everything possible that we can to protect you. We bring in um, uh, professional cleaning companies all the time with the uh, Lysol bombs that explode in our hallways. Uh, we have, uh, I bet, 20 uh, Purell machines uh, that you don't have to touch, just hold your hand under. So we're, we're doing everything that we can to make them feel comfortable um, because they want to come into the studio. They want to be able to access the phones. I think they feel like their shows are better if they're live and in person. So yeah. me, I'm just a mother in. I just, I protect them with everything I have. Well, um, actually, Troy Sterling said that he's out of orange juice now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up, Sterling, on my way. Home. Scott, Denise, anything to add to that? We do a weekly Zoom meeting, just like Scott was saying earlier. Um, so the programming staff gets a chance to just get together, eyeball each other, um, share what's you know going on. We talk. We do spend some time talking about imaging and some ideas, um, future kind of you know what's what suggestions ideas some because we're all kind of creative people and that's part of what we're missing not being together because when you kind of turn all these creative people you know loose it, it can be a crazy time and so we do that um and i do try to uh, touch base with everybody during the week um just to check and see 
how they're doing. Um, we encourage at the beginning, before we realized that everybody was going to be working from home, we did encourage people to limit their connections with other people, to always use their own headphones, wipe down anything when they, when they get in and when they leave, wipe everything back down again, you know, bring your hand sanitizer or we, we put a giant bottle in the studio so that, you know, you just making people conscious and aware. But since then, most everybody is working from their home studios now. Okay, Scott, how about you? Anything to add on encouraging your staff right now? Yeah, I think I think it's just, you know, we've got to stay connected so we can charge each other up. Because when you feel isolated, you start to just feel negative and you feel like you don't have anything to say. You feel like you're the only person that's feeling it. And so we just try to, you know, make sure that our team is just, at least for our air team getting together and just kind of charge each other back. How are you feeling this week? What are you seeing? You notice anything's changing? And we're talking through it. The next thing you know, we're all sharing ideas. Of, hey, I did this break where I was talking about this, or I was sharing this great story, or my friend was telling me this, and, you know, homeschooling is crazy right now, and da da da, da and you get into all of that. And you start talking about it. Next thing you know, you feel charged up. But I think the other part is we've got to keep our, I mean, we're as leaders, shepherding is may not be your primary gift. You might be more of a vision, visionary style or an administrative style, or, but shepherding is part of the skill set. And I think right now we've got to spend some time thinking about how we do that for our team because God's put us in charge of a ministry and we're overseers of that ministry and, and a team is people. And so it doesn't mean that as leaders, we're any better than anyone else or any smarter than anyone else. We don't have to be smarter than other people. We just want to be facilitators. And if we can just, you know, start with some sort of thought to kind of lead our team and nudge them along in the spiritual discussions. I mean, if, if you've got this well and it's this deep and you're pouring out water to your listeners all week and you get down to the bottom and you're scraping the cup against the bottom, trying to get some water. If you're not taking time as it's going down to refill that, you're going to get to the place where you feel de depleted. You feel isolated. You feel just totally like I'm out. I'm stressed. I'm, I'm running away. I, 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 I don't have anything to contribute anymore. And team needs to know when we're feeling that way, Let's be transparent, but like, let's work on filling their cup, like Troy was talking about, and serving them and protecting them, but speaking life to them and encouraging them along the way, because they are our front lines and they are our storytellers, and they're the ones that our listeners are looking to in a primary way. When our community is <laughs> melting down, there's only a couple of rates radio stations in their area that are even talking about anything remotely hopeful yeah. and we get the privilege of being one of those Definitely. well we're going to take some questions um and and um there's a lot of them so i want to make sure we get to all of them because they're really some great questions so i'm just going to throw it to one person anything anybody else has anything to add feel free to jump in so first one's for you troy um, I read where one consultant was suggesting to his clients that they pull back on their currents and play more gold. Is that something that KSBJ has considered doing? No, we uh, we really haven't messed with our rotation. We we're, we do a lot of research, so you know we, we know what we're playing is the right songs. Um, we do, however, as we're looking at new songs to play, um, there are a lot of great new songs out right now but we're pretty um, choosy and we want to pick the songs that are, that we feel are speaking to the situation that we're in. And, and uh, we'll, we'll choose those songs over just general, you know, Christian songs. Um, but um, as far as changing our rotations, we haven't, we haven't done that at KSBJ. Okay. Gotcha. Um, next question. Um, Denise, some States seem to have flown on the lighted up events at hospitals or excuse me, I need glasses. It says frown, not, not flown. <laughs> Some states seem to frown on the lighted up events at hospitals. Have you heard of any station report that their city or state discourages the in-car destination prayer events? You know, right after we saw um, what had happened in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, we started brainstorming and we were planning to do something like that for one of our uh, really big hospitals here in our market. Okay. And um, within 24 hours of the time we started putting everything together was when we uh, found out that the governor had 
halted everything and it was a shelter at home like several thousand dollar fine if you were out and you weren't and you didn't have a specific reason to be an essential person on the road in a car so we kind of nixed that idea <laughs> i bet i bet a concept for the cities and the stations to be the advocates for that and to be the yeah. constant bringing the listeners together for sure um but there are those places that that can't do that hey scott have you um i mean have you been praying more on the air um the rest of this question says and have you done larger talk segments to let folks express their needs or ask your neighbor type concept? We've like Troy, we're, we're kind of focusing on like, what are, what are our strengths and what are we delivering normally and what are our values? And we started it from sort of what are our values when we started to decide like where, how much we're going to do, what are we going to change music? Are we going to pray more? Are we going to have longer conversations or or talk like Day of Hope sort of sort of things? Um, our our team isn't huge to keep our team healthy and focus on the content first. So we're not doing as many like ex out like outside promotions and things and the service elements we would be doing normally. But obviously, yeah, like when 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 our listeners are saying we come to you for hope and encouragement and we come to you for scripture, we we are praying on the air, we are sharing that. We are talking about those things, um, but we're also leaning into the strengths of our different personalities and where they are and where their comfort zone is. Like we we're talking about just kind of shepherding the team and shepherd. And when I say the team, I mean the air team and what we do with that. So um, I do a morning show and a lot of what I do is interviews and things like that. And when you think interviews, you think normally like, oh, you're putting on a a community pastor who's doing an event or you're putting on some a first responder and talking to them for for 15 minutes and obviously we're not doing that we're you know because people are still listening in smaller chunks i mean i do on the morning show some some content breaks that are probably longer than most most morning shows do but when i do that i want to make sure that when i'm doing it I'm doing that in place of playing a better song. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that's of value. This is something that is profound that I have an expert or I, like if I have Max Lucado on, you know, that, that, that's of more value to my listener right now than playing a new song that she's unfamiliar with. You know what I mean? And so when we can have a conversation about something relevant at the moment on that, you know, I do lead into that. But on my show, I look at that as, Max Lucado is my co-host this morning if I'm doing that. I don't say it like that. I don't frame it like that. But if I'm going to have someone like him or a Dwight Bain on or Mark Batterson on my show, they are the expert. They are a hope giver. They are someone that can speak truth to our listeners regardless of who they are. I mean, these guys have a natural charisma and natural giftings that God's given them that he hasn't given me. So if we can just frame what, what they have to say and facilitate that, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the Holy Spirit lead on that but that's how we are all throughout the year though too because it's missional and it is what our values are here um but what we also do with that like when the question on the for the longer the longer term longer form sort of things we'll have a discussion and i may talk to mark batterson for 20 minutes but i record it long form and then i put some bite-sized chunks on the air i talk to him for 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 two minutes i play a song i come back i talk to him about something else for a minute or two or three maybe if it was really good but three is long three is long i'm not necessarily advocating that for everyone but there are, is a time and a place for that in this season where sometimes that works but then i've got to look at this strategically and let the songs breathe for a little while but my listeners reset because i know that there's they still have going on just because they're at home doesn't mean their undivided time is listening to the radio you know what i mean they've got kids jumping on zoom meetings and they're trying to keep a schedule someone's saying i'm hungry mom i need i need breakfast you know the dog's making a mess over on your carpet and you're like oh you're running around and you know we're, we're looking for ways to reset that so i'll put those things on our on-demand content and like we talked about with you know using some of the Alexa and Google Home things, the podcast on demand audio, we'll say, hey, we went deeper in this discussion and you can get it here. And so we're doing that. And so the way that I'm recording my content is long form and then chopping it up into bite-sized pieces to use on the air and then putting the long form content on our digital offerings. So if those people do want to go deeper or want to dig more into that discussion, we've got that. And then I can actually take that the second half of the conversation and use that a week or two later it's fresh content on the air 
for different listeners who weren't listening two weeks ago when I played a different part of that interview. Yes, definitely. Here's a question. Does anyone have an idea of your current QM and share? I know for some ratings are coming out soon. Can you speculate unless you know? Um, we get weeklies here and things come out later this week. So, oh, go ahead. We, we, we well, get weekly here in Houston, so um, we noticed that uh, our third weekly would have coincided with the first week of the stay-at-home order in Houston. Um, we, the Palmer report, people using measured media, was down 50,000 in our market, but our QM actually went up 70,000, and uh, our share went up uh, pretty dramatically, uh, six plus. So we're, we're excited. Uh, now the fourth week could be something completely different. I think uh, people are more into a routine on that second week of the stay at home order. And uh, we, we could see the numbers drop, but that first week of the stay at home order in Houston, um, our numbers went, went uh, number one women 2554. Uh, we're hoping that holds. Yeah, that's great. Um, Denise, um, this is a question that came in. Um, is your is your leadership offering hazard pay for your key staff? Uh, no, <laughs> not that I'm aware of. But I don't. I'm not in charge of that. So, <laughs> anybody else heard have anything to speak about with the hazard pay for your staff? No, I mean I'm just fortunate to have a job. Um, there's a lot of furloughs in the radio industry. And uh, ministry as big as KSBJ takes a lot of money, and I, I don't know the situation with donations. I know that um, we're not in crisis mode, and um, we have great leadership, and everybody is still getting paychecks right now. So, man, I, I don't need extra. I'm, I'm thankful for what I get. Okay, here's a great question. What song titles have you found as your top three to five that resonate with your listeners in this season? Like Fear is a Liar. Like Fear is a Liar by Zach Williams. Uh, has research shown some top tunes for this time that we live in? And that's probably from Jeff Cruz, but don't quote me on that. No, just kidding. Um, All of Jeff Cruz's songs testing well. <laughs> you Jeff Cruz. So down to, are you finding some of your songs? What songs are resonating with your listeners right now? I'm going to look right now. I'm going to look at my playlist. You know how somebody puts you on the spot. What's your favorite song from 1984? You're like, uh, from our survey last week, the results, the number one song, Elevation Worship, Sea of Victory, uh, came in at number one, Mercy Me with Almost Home, right behind that. That's great. Uh, here in Houston, Waymaker is, I mean, that's the song that every yep. uh, hospital uh, parking lot prayer and praise service wants us to play is the, the Waymaker song. Um, this new Tasha Layton song, I don't know if you're playing it yet, it's, it's new. Um, that song speaks directly to, to what's happening, and well, we jumped on that one pretty early. But, you know, the interesting thing is when all this began, as I was trying to listen to the radio station just as a listener, uh, I was in awe of almost every single song that we played um, had something uh, for me, whether it's hope or to cast out fear, but um, and then I got to thinking about the, our colleagues in secular radio. You know, in fact, I I tuned into one of the stations and they played I, I forget the name of the song, a Kelly Clarkson song, and uh, they the the comment was something to the fact of I wish we had more stronger songs like that. And I'm thinking, and praise the Lord, man, every song we play on KSBJ is speaking to the situation in one way or the other. We are so fortunate that. And that listener, that casual listener that's driving by and lands on a song, there's a pretty good chance that, that song is going to speak to them right where they are. Yeah, I'd say, you know, We the Kingdom, uh, the Big Daddy Weave, like Troy said, Waymaker is probably our, our biggest song right now, Zach Williams. Uh, Alive and Breathing from Matt Marr was a really good one. We've done a few things with just because it's just about gratefulness when things are crazy. You know, it's like, I'm alive. I'm, I'm going to praise the Lord regardless of that. Cause if I don't, the rocks are going to do it for me, you know? Mm -hmm. And then and obviously with, you know, we really were getting a lot, you know, with, 
with with the songs that we're that when our when our personalities tie into the songs and we're talking about living on this side of the resurrection and our 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 personalities are actually like pointing that out to listeners that's really going deep with them right now yeah. and our team has been doing a really good job like just leaning into the words and the songs and trying to frame that for the listeners kind of like a leader would yeah okay final question for you guys today knowing that every area is different this comes from my question knowing that every area is different what are you hearing about dates for rescheduled fundraisers and the strategies behind choosing those dates um, at KSBJ, we have a fundraiser scheduled for June. Um, I don't know if uh, Sherathon is going to look the same way as, as it has in the past. One of the questions on the Jacobs Media Survey was about fundraising, and over 60% of the KSBJ listeners said that it would not be inappropriate for KSBJ to raise uh, funds during this time, um, but to have a a auditorium full of phone volunteers with social distancing. Um, I think share is going to be a very different uh, thing for us this year. Um, John Hall is a master and he's going to come up with a strategy that works for us. But I think we're all kind of uh, understanding that it may be all online giving, who knows? Um, we had our uh, fundraiser scheduled for the first couple of days in April, March 31st, April 1st and 2nd. We opted to push that back as well for the same uh, reason. We just felt like it was um, just really not appropriate, but we ran uh, imaging during the, that particular week because we'd been building up to it. And so all of a sudden it wasn't happening. And we just wanted to let people know that um, we, you know, we care about what's happening with you right now, and we want to focus on making sure that the message of hope and the encouragement is there for you. And that particular week, we had so many online gifts without even really asking. I mean, thousands of dollars coming in those three days, and it was honestly the staff. Uh, we have a little um, WhatsApp that we use were just blown away. And we came away from that week thinking, you know, there's a connection that has been established. The listeners recognize that we, we are all in this together. And we do have a tentative week in June set up, but we're praying about what that's gonna look like. Uh, just as Troy, you were sharing, it, it may be totally different. Um, we, we would love for, or there to be a way that we could actually shorten it or make it, you know, something that um, we like the the story of um, an evangelist shared years ago for uh, a way of saying thank you instead of asking, saying thank you. He sang up. Um, nobody was allowed to say, "Could I please have the biscuits?" It was thank you for the biscuit. And so we've kind of used that analogy and said, thank you for supporting the ministry uh, of your Christian radio station. And that, I think, is what we've been seeing over these last few weeks. The support has just continued to come in. Great. Scott, anything to add on that? Yeah, I, I, I think the more you can, you can dig into and really ask God, like, what is the that in, in our community, what's the story of what God did through this season? If you can ask that question and pray along that as this is going on for God to reveal that to you and your leadership team, I'm like, God, show us what you're doing. Show us what you're doing in this city. Show us what role that maybe you're even using this music or these conversations or, or our ministry in the midst of that with other churches. I think a lot of us are going to find, are we really a conduit to the Christian community in our city? I think you're going to see the fruit if it's there or if it's not over the next weeks. And if it is, showcase what that is and you can maybe put a little bit of a frame on that to to show where that picture is or where that story is but I don't know I think that's really where well my pastor said it like this one time he said we don't pray about the work prayer actually is the work 
And a lot of times we think, okay, I'm doing a share and I'm going to pray about what you're going to do here, God. And I'm going to pray about this. So you do this work. And it's like, actually for us as the leaders, as the program directors, as the general managers, like us going to God in prayer and going to battle and, and you know, and, and taking this to Jesus and saying, what do you want to do through this season? Give us some vision. What's the story of what you're doing here, Lord, and show us how to connect the dots. Yeah. I think that's the prayer that, and the posture that, that our team is coming to as we're deciding, do we even do a spring pledge drive or do we just punt and wait until the fall? But like I said, we, we have a project that we are actually going to do for a new transmitter for our KSOS signal in Vegas. And so, you know, that, that, was, that just got, shipped to us and we actually have it in our possession right now uh which is awesome but like we didn't do the pledge drive that was going to be a big chunk of that right yeah. but yeah. but but we know god's going to provide because he's provided for 47 48 years of craziness through this ministry and so when you look back to what he did 10 years ago 20 years ago 25 years ago you look at this in the future and you just go hey we got this you know there's some reserves we're going to work on that right now and we're going to ask god what he wants to do with it but if you do have a project, that may be another thing to showcase. Because if you have something tangible you can point your listeners to, that is a different strategy that can work for your ministry too. If, if, if something else is different and there's an immediate need, because sometimes people do respond to need. It's a different strategy that depends on what, what, your, what, your, uh, what, what your ministry is doing. But I don't know. We have, we have something different that the disciples didn't have in Holy Week. 2000 years ago, we have the Holy spirit inside of us. And when they were walking with Jesus and they were dealing with persecution for those first 40 days, while Jesus was walking the earth after the resurrection, they still didn't have the Holy spirit. And then 10 days later at Pentecost, the Holy spirit was poured out on them. And so we have that same power that raised Jesus from the grave living inside us and as leaders. All we got to do is ask him for the strategy and the vision. That's good. That's really good. Well, we're going to close on that. Uh, two things to let everybody know. We've talked about this Jacobs Media kind of, uh, coronavirus study. Um, they've already done the presentation to all of the participating stations. Um, Fred is actually going to be presenting that on Tuesday at noon. So a week from today at noon, we're going to open it up to all CNB um, members, CNB family, um, to join us to see. Because as you have heard these folks talk about, those, there's, the insights are really critical to know exactly where you are and how you can best serve your listeners. On Friday, we're going to have our next special webinar. It's going to be focusing on promotions. Um, our topic is how is your station building community engagement during this crisis because it's all different right now. So we've got five stations that are going to be joining us talking specifically about what they're doing to meet the needs of their listeners. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, we're going to offer this record for those that might have only been able to listen halfway or want to share it with others. But a big thanks to Troy, Scott, and Denise for joining us and sharing your wisdom and being a part of today. So please know the CMB team, we're praying for you and look forward to seeing big. Take care.